Do not wait for hail, lightning, or tornadoes to arrive. It is time to prepare now. North Carolina lawmakers officially named this Severe Weather Preparedness Week for a reason. This is some crazy video. Right now, people in California are dealing with hail, and this comes after weeks of rain and snow. Severe weather can happen anytime and anywhere. So you know what? Let's dig into it. This is a week everyone should have circled on their calendar, Severe Weather Preparedness Week, because now is the time to make a potentially life-saving plan before the emergency happens and to make sure you know where to go, who to call, and of course, the signs to watch out for when a dangerous storm is on the way. So when we're talking about severe weather, what do we mean? Well, with thunderstorms, it means winds are howling, maybe 58 miles per hour. There will also be hail and possibility for tornadoes. When it comes to tornadoes, on average, we have about 28 a year in North Carolina. Around 30 injuries are reported. Two people die. We never want to see anyone injured or killed during a storm. It is why being prepared is so very important. And that's why we're going to take some time because we're going to talk about severe weather. And of course, we're bringing in our expert, which is Chief Meteorologist Tim Buckley. Who else would we talk to <laughs> about this? All right, so let's break down three severe weather questions. Sure. These are the common questions that we get all the time. And we're going to start with this one right here. What is the most common type of severe weather in North Carolina when it comes to the spring? Yeah, it's a great question, Tanya. And you know, the, the reason that we have severe weather week this week is because we're entering the months that are more busy for more storms. Spring is our primary season for severe weather. And what we're specifically talking about would be when might you see tornadoes happen. The busiest months for tornadoes in North Carolina, mm. on average, are April and May. And usually if you get those in the other months, they're typically not quite as strong. But if you think back to ones in our history that have been pretty bad, right. April, the Greensboro was in May. Mm -hmm. Those are those bad months that we want to be ready for. All right, so our next question that we're going to tackle, does seeing rotation, because we hear you say that all the time, sure. we're seeing rotation. Does that mean that there's actually a tornado? Yeah, if you're going to watch us, you know, when, like you should, when there's a tornado warning, turn us on TV. This is what I'm going to be showing you. This is not a current storm, but just an example. We'll show you those reds up against the greens. That's me looking at the radar and saying, hey, this storm is spinning. It's moving like a top right now, spinning around. We can't tell for sure just based on that if there's a tornado happening. Sometimes there is, sometimes there's not. If we get reports of damage, that increases our confidence that, yes, mm -hmm. this is happening on the ground. But even though we don't know for certain that it's happening, just the possibility means you go to your safe spot and you should know where that is. Okay. And then last but not least, this is something we hear all the time. Heat lightning. <laughs> Does heat lightning actually exist? This gets me in trouble because this is where I have to tell you that your grandma might not have been a severe mm -hmm. weather expert. Mm -hmm. uh, and I love grandma too. But here you go. <laughs> heat lightning. What in the world is that? Well, heat lightning has something to do with the fact that you are actually not hearing all of the sound the right way. So when you're hearing or seeing that lightning way far in the distance, but you're not hearing the sound, the reason is, is that it's happening too far away from you. That sound is not getting to you from the lightning bolt. So you're seeing that flash of lightning. It's in the distance. It's at nighttime, but you're uh -huh. not hearing that thunder. It's exactly the same though as regular lightning and just as dangerous. All right, so Tim set us straight, which is good. It really comes down to knowing what to expect when a storm is coming in a watch versus a warning. You hear that all the time. That's key to know what we're talking about. So let's look at that. A watch means severe weather is possible, but not happening yet. At this point, you're going to want to be checking in with the WFMY forecast all day and have a plan ready just in case. So we're going to do it since you're probably cooking dinner, right? Think of it like this when you're cooking pizza. Having all the ingredients ready to go means a watch is issued. A warning means that severe weather is happening in your area. The ingredients are all put together. That pizza, it's cooked. It means it's happening. When a tornado warning is issued, you need to get to a safe place inside. It means getting to the lowest level of your home and a space with no windows. You want to avoid rooms on the top floor or connected to an outside wall. The basement is the best option. So this is what we're giving you. This is the tornado safety. So look at that. If you don't have a basement, again, the lowest, most interior space of your home is where you need to be going. Now, being inside is really the safest when storms move through. If you're outside and you hear thunder, you could really be in trouble. If you can hear the rumbles, you are close enough to get struck by lightning. Around 400 people are struck by lightning every single year. 
You want to make sure if you do hear that thunder that you are anywhere but outside. If you are outside and have nowhere safe and shelter to go, you want to try and get as low as possible. Wait about 30 minutes after that last rumble of thunder before it's really safe. And you don't want to wait until you hear the storm to try and get somewhere safe. You know, the easiest way to be prepared is to watch WFMY and have those alerts turned on your phone so that we can show you what's coming up. Download the free WFMY News 2 app. Open it up. On the home page, click the gear icon. It's in the top right corner. You're going to go to the app's settings. Click notification settings and then severe weather alerts. From there, you can set your hometown so you get the alerts for where you live. Make sure that severe weather alerts is turned on. You can then pick out what kinds of alerts you want to get. All of them, only watches and warnings, or just when a warning is issued for where you live. Now, once you have those alerts turned on, make sure that your phone, your laptop, your tablets, that they're all charged so that you have a way to get updates during the storm. If you do lose power, do not open your fridge. You want to keep everything inside as cold as possible so it doesn't spoil. You'll also want to have non-perishable foods and plenty of bottled water on hand. Experts say you should have at least three days of food and water ready before a storm. Another way to prepare ahead of time is to make sure that your yard is ready to go. Oftentimes we lose power during storms because of those trees that come down. Keeping an eye on the trees in your yard and getting rid of, rid of any potentially dead ones could be a big saver for you and make sure that you don't have a headache after that bad weather. Just look up and look down is what we tell people. When you look up, um, you know, if, if the, all the leaves are falling off, but they're not falling off any of the other trees, that's an obvious sign that the tree's under stress, there may be something wrong, or if it's dropping lots of branches, definitely something you want to keep an eye on. And look at the ground. If the ground around the trees is starting to pull up, uh, you may have an issue of the tree starting to uproot. Be prepared, not scared.